Hi everyone, welcome to video two in my metal repair series. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how this brilliant little epoxy putty can be used to repair holes in metal, to transform this into this. Now, I came across this stuff a couple of years ago when I was repairing a hole in the roof of this funny little outside light. And I've got to say, when you consider the uses of this stuff, you've got to wonder why more of us DIYers don't know about it. So that is the purpose of this video today. Now, we'll come on to how to mix a putty in just a minute, but a quick introduction. Milliput is a two-part cold setting, non-shrinking epoxy putty. It's brilliantly easy to mix, as you'll see in a minute, and you've basically got to decide which of the products would be best for your particular job. As you can see, it comes in standard yellow gray, silver gray, white, black, and terracotta. And each product has slightly different uses. The version I've got here is Milliput Black. I bought this because amongst many other uses, it's particularly good for cast iron, which of course is what my gutters are. And finally, in case you're wondering where you can get it from, I bought mine from Amazon for just over five pounds. So having stripped off the paint, I've got this hole to fill. You used to be able to get really good products like this. This is about 15, 20, 25 years old. I've tried to find this everywhere, but I can't. So I'm gonna make do with a combination of wire wool and a few wire, wire brushes I've got for my drill. Try a bit of multi solve on it just to degrease it and uh, get it ready for the milliput. See, well, that looks pretty good. And the great thing about this stuff is it evaporates, so we don't have to worry about cleaning it off thoroughly before painting. The other thing I'm going to do is give the area that I'm going to be using filling a very light sand with sandpaper because this apparently aids the process of the milliput adhering to the surface. Okay, time to mix some milliput together. I want to keep these bags intact because it's quite important to keep the um, the epoxy as fresh as possible. Now I don't need a lot of it, it's only a tiny hole. But obviously I need to cut equal amounts of each. I've got to say normally I'm a bit blasé about um, and protection but for once I'm gonna put some rubber gloves on and I got these I think from Screwfix they're disposable nitrile gloves and I'm using them a lot more these days for painting jobs just because it's so much less hassle cleaning your hands but I'm not sure how this is going to work with the heli put right so we've got our equal parts here and we're going to start mixing them together. I think the instructions are to do this for about five minutes until the colours merge and become uniform so that no streaks can be seen. I don't think these gloves are really necessary. Look, it's not like I'm getting a lot of residue on them. Right, that's looking pretty uniform. It's only a small amount, so I think we're probably good to go with that. Instructions say you can use this stuff with water at all stages. The milliput responds to the use of water. And so you can keep your fingers and tools moistened with water to avoid sticking. To obtain a smooth finish, mould or apply it, and then immediately wipe and smooth gently with a wet finger or with a fine textured moist cloth. Okay, everyone, we're back outside. And now I'm going to just apply the milliput to 
the hole. Start patching it. Pressing it in from the inside. What I love about this stuff is it's much more malleable than a lot of fillers you use. It's just like plasticine really, so you can just sort of play around with it until you're happy you've got a good sort of consistency and a good shape. I've got a little bit of a hole there, so I'm just gonna put a bit more on. And just push it into the hole. I don't have the glove on. Yeah, you do get a little bit of residue on your finger, but not a huge amount. So when you're happy with it, you can apply with a moistened finger just to smooth it down, because apparently it responds to responds to the use of water at all stages, from initial mixing to final setting. So I'm just with a slightly moistened finger, just smoothing that. That's great. Happy with that. Now, as I've got a bit left over, and I don't know how easily this is going to come out on the video, I've got a cracked part of the hopper here in the corner that's never had... It's obviously it's very brittle stuff, this uh, cast iron, and at some point it was this was... Um, it lost its edge. So I'm going to try and put a little bit of the milliput on that as well, because I've got a bit left over. This may not work, but we'll see how we get on. Just giving it a little squeeze and I'm just on the edge of my wire brush, just making it straight. Well, I'm going to be really interested to see how this repair works up here. Do you know what? It's not necessary for the um, operation of the hopper, but as you walk down the drive, you can see it quite clearly and it doesn't need to be strong. It probably won't be that strong, but let's see how we get on because once that's painted, you'll never know that that chip was missing. Okay so that's repair number one done. It'll set in three to four hours without shrinking. And looking inside the hopper, that is the repair from inside. So it should be a really strong repair because I'm basically layering up on the inside and the outside of the hopper. Right it's about 36 hours since this repair was done. It's sort of gone metal hard. You can see that leaves the old scratch behind when I dig my nails into it. I'm just going to give it a little light sand. Just to take that slightly greasy, not greasy, just to take that sort of surface film off. And that's it, that's just all I need to do. See now when I tap it nothing happens. Lovely rock hard repair. And then of course, not forgetting this little repair here. Again, it's sort of metal hard now. And all ready, give it a brief sand and get it painted. So that's it everyone, I really hope you found today's video useful. In my next video I'll be showing you how I've used this JB Weld epoxy adhesive to glue two bits of metal back together. 
If you enjoyed today's video, please click on the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.